this, um, I guess, what is it, sort of, um, what's it they've been doing across the Europe? Trial. A trial, this trial across Europe. How has it gone? Well, the results are actually out on Tuesday, as a matter of fact, and on uh, Tuesday afternoon in the House of Commons. Uh, the results are being announced. There'll be people there to, to take us through what those results are from the pilot um, and question and answer session as to how it's gone. So it's just about to be announced, as I said, on Tuesday. But generally, it looks like uh, four-day weeks um, tend to increase productivity, lower absenteeism, recruitment and retention tends to be better. Um, so overall, and this is not just locally, this is on an international level. Um, so so generally, um, it seems to be pretty positive, pretty productive and beneficial. That's that's what the evidence uh, seems to indicate. Now, Peter, you know, my, my uh, dad always said to me, if something sounds too good to be true, then it is too good to be true. Uh, lots of people might be thinking the, the, the same thing here. What, what would you say to them? Well, I, you know what? It's a, it's a fair comment, Phil, in so far as um, people do believe that. But that's what they said about the weekend. Because remember, we people used to work basically seven days a week. They used to work 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Uh, we never had, if you want, official weekends. We never used to have uh, paid holiday uh, money, fair, you know, equal pay for women. All those things were said at the time that that would affect the economy. You know, giving a worker a weekend off or a day off, oh, that will affect the economy. We won't be able to afford it. And it really never proved to be to be the case. The same was said about the minimum pay, wasn't it? That the economy would go into nosedive if we had a minimum pay. So uh, history doesn't show that, to be fair, in all these advances in terms of working days and practices. So I think the bit that... I, so I've got a kind of two questions here. So first of all, you've got the fact that you're getting the same pay for four days rather than five days. So what do businesses think about that? Because that's fundamentally increasing their costs by a significant amount. Well, of course, but to some extent, that's the whole point about it being offset by productivity gains, the whole question about recruitment and, and retention. The benefits that, that actually come from that four-day working week isn't just about the employer having to cough up, a, a, if you want, an extra day's pay for no work. It's about the benefits that the business overall and in the round, and financially, of course, uh, get from introducing that. And I suppose that's the whole point. Yeah, so you're prices. saying there's a 20%, which is phenomenal if there is, you're saying roughly a 20% increase in productivity. So my other question, because I said there was two, I'm now thinking children go to school like five days a week. People only work in four days a week. Are we saying kids are only going to school now for four days a week, so it's going to impact their education? Or are we bringing in a new set of teachers for the fifth day week? No, I think it's spread over the, you know, effectively it would be spread over five days. So you, you, you know, it's like, it's like anything. I might work Monday to Wednesday or Thursday and you'd work from Tuesday to Friday. So okay. you'd spread that over a period of time. And that to some extent as well, inevitably. I don't want to sort of say company X should run it in this way and company Y runs it in that way. I think that's the whole point in the sense of a pilot because... You propose a, a, an issue, you've done this in the past, you propose something, but then you want to have the evidence, which is there, to make the proposal. Well, and they, then to Peter, back but the, then the that cost of school is going to go up, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got an extra set of kids, yeah, teachers. Well, Peter, the question I, I've got, you, you mentioned lots of other developments that happened in the past, which I thought was a, a particularly fair point to make. But most of those are backed up by the law, and the law's changed. Is this something that you would just want to encourage businesses to do, or is this something that you would envisage being introduced by, by law that companies would have to abide by? Yeah, well, I think ever the way, there are companies who already operate a four-day week at the moment. There are a number of companies that operate a four-day week. Um, so I think companies would be an advantage to the companies to do that, you know, without being pushed, so to speak. But inevitably in these situations, to have something of a level playing field, you know this, you introduce legislation which sets out that level playing field. Because we already have a, you know, a, a maximum working week already in a way. We already have the working time directive and rules. So they, we already have legislative 
frameworks for most of these things, and this would just be adding to that, but, that legislative but framework. Course, so, some jobs it's not quite so easy, is it? I mean, if, if I can understand, you know, you can be might you can be much more productive, you know, for example, in a in an office job or whatever. If you're if you're as I used to be, sat on the on the checkouts in a supermarket, it's very difficult to see how you can be any more productive in order to to uh, justify only working four days for the same pay. So, would you be excluding yeah. people like that from this from these provisions? No, not necessarily because there are uh, there are retailers who are already taking part in this pilot, and it would really be very interesting to find out the example you've just given, Phil, about well, how is that operated? How has that worked within retail? But you already know, and I already know, retail has gone down the path in many situations of the checkouts, which are automatic. We all we all use them, don't we? So so I, I'm not trying to prescribe that supermarket X should do this and business Y should do that and finance institutes should do this and banks should do that because there's a bank taking part in this as well. IT companies. So the range of organisations taking part in this and let's see what comes out of that to, to, to help us lay the ground. Peter Dowd, thank you so much indeed for taking the time to join us and we'll look forward to seeing the results early next week. Thank you so much for joining us.